Well, today we're going to talk about prehnite. And in my club, which is the Houston Gem Mineral Society in Houston, Texas, I'm known as the prehnite man. And that's kind of a term of affection and humor because I collect prehnite and not too many people do. And so where did that come from? I grew up in New Jersey near some of the quarries that supplied New York with all kinds of uh, material for making concrete. And in those quarries are found lots and lots of prehnite. And prehnite, this is a good example from New Jersey, is a calcium aluminum silicate hydroxyl. And that's what the formula shows. And hydroxyl is OH. And prehnite tends to have this kind of a green color, and it forms in the basalts that make up the ridges that occur in northern New Jersey. Those ridges have been mined for over 100 years. So growing up, this is one of the very first minerals I encountered when I started getting interested in minerals. And there are lots of other minerals that are found there, but this is one I happen to focus on. It is pretty, and it has a, a very neat thing called an epimorph, where it will coat a pre-existing mineral, and then that mineral dissolves out and the prehnite is still left. This is a shape called an arrowhead or a snakehead shape because it's after a mineral called anhydrite which is no longer there anymore. <clears throat> so that's what I grew up on. And this is one. This one is also from the very same quarry. And you notice it's a different shade of green. That's what most people don't realize, that prehnite comes in different shades of green, uh, quite a variety of shades. This one is also an epimorph after anhydrite, and it is, you can see, there were dozens and dozens of very, very thin anhydrite blades there at one time. The prehnite came in and deposited as a crust on top of, on top of the anhydrite, which subsequently dissolved. See, so there's the back. And this is one of the things that attracted me to prehnite and makes it an attractive specimen are these, its ability to coat things and create these epimorphs. Because prehnite normally forms, you don't see the crystals. It just forms as a crust of a globular crust on top of the rock in cavities. Well, how do you get cavities in basalt? If you think about, if you've seen pictures in Hawaii of the basalts flowing out there, they've got a lot of gas in them and they make bubbles and tubes and stuff. Well, the same thing happened in New Jersey in the Triassic 200 and something million years ago. And it left a hardened group of rocks with lots and lots of open space in it. And when these got buried and had groundwater going through it, prehnite was one of the minerals that got deposited in those rocks. And this is commonly where you find prehnite, is in basalts and, their, and diabases. Uh, that's the most common way that you find, and this is very commonly found in New Jersey, Virginia, Connecticut, and Massachusetts, uh, all of which were part of what they call Triassic Rift Basins. This, this one is from Massachusetts, and you see how it has this spire form. And you can just barely see the hole there. 
was a very, very thin anhydrite crystal that grew, and this grew around it, and now that anhydrite is gone. So that's what you see on the East Coast, <clears throat> but there are other places in the world where you find prenite, and I've got couple of them here. It's very common in India around the city of Mumbai on the west coast of India and near the Bay of Bengal. Uh, there are big basalt flows there that are thousands of feet thick and the ones around Mumbai tended to have lots of small lamantite crystals. Actually some of them weren't so small they were quite large, up to five, six inches long. And these were coated by prenite. And then the lamantite, which is kind of an unstable mineral, dissolved. It's gone. And the prenite is left. And then other minerals, like apophyllite and gyrolite, deposited on top of the prenite. So you've got a group of minerals all on this structural framework. So once again, you're, you're looking at epimorphs, like in New Jersey, but the prenite is replacing a different mineral, and so you have a different form. And I said, this is one of the amazing things about, about prenite. Sometimes prenite will occur in a nodular form, like this is from Northern Australia. And because it comes in a hardness of six to six and a half and takes a nice polish, uh, it can be made into jewelry. And this is an example of a piece of prenite from Australia that's been polished. And you can see that it takes a nice polish there. And these are often made into beads and cabochons and occasionally faceted stones. Most of the other prenite I've shown you is too thin to do that with. But in some places, it's thick enough that you can use it that way. Rarely, prenite occurs as distinct crystals. And one of the very famous places for that is in the Jeffrey Mine in Asbestos, Quebec, Canada. Those crystals that kind of tan crystals that you see on this specimen I'm holding up, they are actual individual prenite crystals. So this is a completely different form from the common way that prenite occurs in crusts like I've been talking about earlier. And this is from, they get up in this mine up to seven inches long. Now, I don't have any. I just have some that are a quarter inch long, but hey. Occasionally at other places in the world, you get also find crystals or groups of crystals. These are from a place called Marilani Hills in Tanzania. And what's unique about this is that this is where Tanzanite comes from which is a gemstone that some of you may know about. Well, other minerals are found with the tanzanite, and prenite is one of them. What you're seeing here are all individual crystals of prenite that are forming kind of a druze. Uh, the term druze applies to a bunch of crystals that are not distinct, but you're seeing crystal faces still showing up on the specimen. And these are both from the same deposit. And notice, they're slightly different colors. In fact, there is a blue prenite that also comes from this deposit. 
And that's what I have to tell you about Printite for today.